Well, James Mooney, he was among that very first generation of American anthropologists in the latter part of the 19th century. And so he was really a pioneer. He was the first person to write Indian history with Indian thoughts about their history incorporated into the work. He was absolutely the first person to do that. So he had a lot of ideas that we now think are very modern, but they weren't called that 100 years ago. Mooney worked with an awful lot of Indian tribes. The principal tribes were the Cherokee. He published a lot about the Cherokee. He spent years living with the Cherokee. In Oklahoma, he worked with the Cheyenne, the Arapaho, the Kiowa, um, and a number of other tribes in very short stints. He was working with them in his investigation of the ghost ants religion. Mooney spent years with the Cherokee. He discovered that Cherokee religious leaders had formulas of medicinal prescriptions and formulas of song and ritual practice. All of this is in Cherokee, of course, and they're using the Cherokee syllabary. From one person that he got very close to, um, this man finally allowed him to look at his syllabary. And this, by this point, Mooney was able to read Cherokee. And he was amazed. It was an entire notebook filled with formulas of songs and ceremonies and medicines, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a very impressive work of intellectual understanding of the botanical world for use in making prescriptions, botanical prescriptions for various illnesses, and also for a religious interpretation and a religious approach to solving Cherokee human problems. Because it wasn't just for ill health, it was for all kinds of things. So if you lost something, there was a formula for that. If you were angry with somebody, there was a formula for that. I mean, it's amazingly wide-ranging. And it was an amazing treasure trove of intellectual activity. We actually have some of these here in our collections. And these formulas are still extremely important to modern Cherokee people here. The topics that he researched were quite varied. When he was in Oklahoma, and he began working with the Kiowa. He discovered that the Kiowas also had what we would call a tradition of military heraldry. All those little medals and stripes that you see on military uniforms from modern Americans. The Kiowa had their own version of that. And it existed on their shields, and sometimes men would take the designs that appeared on their shields and put it on their teepees. You couldn't incorporate somebody else's designs. That would be stealing. And all of the designs had meaning, and most of it referred to the military accomplishments of the men that were carrying the shields. Over many years, he actually had Kiowa men paint miniatures, which we now have in the collection, of the designs, of the, the heraldry and also miniature teepees. And he provided the materials and recruited the oldest men who were really knowledgeable about this. And over many years, finally, that collection was made. Wonderful collection, wonderful designs. The fact that he lived with people for weeks and sometimes months at a time, and that they were willing to tell him a lot of sensitive information about religious practice, about language, about history. He must have had very good relationships with the people that he worked with, or they wouldn't have been talking to him. He had to have been at least seen as somebody that they could trust and work with. He saw Indians as human beings. The fact that he himself came from a poor immigrant Irish background, I think gave him a sensitivity and a humanity vis-a-vis -vis Indian people that other anthropologists didn't have. I think he was very humane, and partly that comes out of his background. And I think that's one of his gifts to the anthropology of today. He was doing what we now call salvage anthropology, 
And in his generation, that's what they were all doing, is what we would now call salvage anthropology. But what they collected continues to inspire us and to inform us uh, more than 100 years later. I mean, he left behind an extraordinary gift for all of us.